Today I want to talk about Lordaeron, the city that fell to Arthas Menethil and then later on became the Undercity. Now one interesting thing that I did find while looking into this was how they labeled the Eastern Kingdoms much further back. They labeled it as the northern part was Lordaeron, just all of it was Lordaeron, the middle part was Kazmadan, and then the bottom part was Azeroth. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't know when they decided to change the southern part from Azeroth to just naming the entire planet Azeroth, but either way, I thought it was interesting to know, and I thought you may want to know too. Let's get into it. In the ancient halls of Ulduar, the titanic watcher known as Lokin fell prey to corruption. Tyr, another titan watcher, along with his allies, fled with the disks of Norganon to uncover the depth of Lokin's treachery, making their escape to the south. It is worth noting that at this point in the story, Kalimdor was one big landmass, so it hasn't been separated by the Sundering yet until later on at the end of the War of the Ancients. Upon realizing the theft, Lokin unleashed a horde of monstrous creatures in pursuit of Tyr's party. The Cathraxi generals Zakaj and Cathix were determined to ensure that Tyr didn't succeed. The conflict culminated in the death of Tyr and Zakaj, while the injured Cathix retreated to the west. The battleground was henceforth known as Tyr's Fall, or Tyr's Fall in the Vrykul language. Tyr and his adversary were buried where they fell, with Tyr's enormous silver hand marking his grave as a tribute to his heroic sacrifice. Now I did try to actually find Tyr's hand in the game, but I couldn't locate it. I looked online just to see if I was just being stupid. But from what I read, Galakrond had eaten it in the battle with the Aspects and Tyr fighting Galakrond, which is the big giant dragon in the past. But after that, I think someone had it, but I don't think it's actually in-game. If it is, I'm not sure where it's at, so maybe you'll stumble upon it one day. Or maybe they might add it in the future, but either way, just thought I'd let you know. The peaceful Vrykul who would accompany the Keepers chose to honor Tyr further by settling near the battlefield and safeguarding the Tomb of Tyr. Their allies respected this decision, while the other Watchers and their creations continued their journey south. As the years passed, Tyr's Fall became a legendary place among the Vrykul of Northern Kalimdor. When King Ymiron ordered the extermination of all infants afflicted by the Curse of Flesh, the Vrykul and their offspring sought refuge in Tyr's Fall Glades. Here, they evolved into a new species known as humans. The remaining Vrykul from Tyr's group formed the Tyr's Guard, and as they realized their mortality, they welcomed the humans into their order. The humans who settled here became known as the Tyr's Fall Tribe, planting the seeds for what would eventually become the Kingdom of Lordaeron. In the heartland of Tyr's Fall, a tribe of humans thrived under the leadership of the valiant Lordane. These people, more cultured than their mountain-dwelling counterparts, were deeply spiritual performing sacred rituals at various shrines scattered across the region. The Silver Hand of Tyr was held in high esteem, its image adorning their pendants. This tribe was the only force capable of thwarting Thoradin's ambition of uniting humanity. Unlike the Altaraki, the Tyr's Fall humans were not easily swayed by brute force. To earn their allegiance, Thoradin had to respect and adopt their religious customs. The would-be king and his guards journeyed to Tyr's Fall's sacred sites, partaking in their rituals including the wearing of the Silver Hand Pendant. At the journey's end, Thoradin met with Lordane, the tribe's leader. He vowed to embrace the religious practices and propagate them among the Arathi if they joined him. To symbolize this pact, Thoradin drew his own blood with his sword, Stromkar, and mixed it with the soil of Tyr's Fall Glades, declaring, Between our people, let this be the only blood we spill. With this, the Tyr's Fall humans pledged their loyalty to Thoradin, with Lordane becoming one of his generals. Lordane's sister, Mereldar, was among the first human followers of the Holy Light, which was later adopted by the Arathi, leading to the establishment of the Church of the Holy Light. During the climactic moments of the Troll Wars, as King Thoradin and his forces retreated to Altarak Fortress, the Amani Trolls threatened to outflank and overrun Arathor's armies. To prevent this catastrophe, General Lordane and his warriors held the line, sacrificing their lives but securing victory for Arathor and Quel'Thalas. In the aftermath, many of Arathor's soldiers settled in the fertile lands of Tyr's Fall, where they established a stronghold and named it Lordaeron, in honor of Lordane. As time passed, rivalries among the kingdoms grew. Before the arrival of the orcs, the human kingdoms of Lordaeron faced internal strife and political games. 
During a period of relative peace, villages quarreled, kingdoms spied on each other, and trade flourished with dwarves, gnomes, and high elves. Some nations, like Lordaeron, emerged as regional leaders, meditating disputes and maintaining order with their formidable militaries. Others focused on defending themselves from the age-old rivals. In the throes of the First War, King Lane of Stormwind, in a desperate plea for aid, sent envoys to the neighboring human realms, bearing ominous tales of a strange, formidable race with green skin. Yet his pleas fell on deaf ears, as the tales were dismissed as mere fabrications. Lordaeron, a kingdom known for its benevolence, was expected to lend a hand. However, a cunning ruse by Deathwing, who masqueraded as a noble from Stormwind, led them to believe that the so-called invaders were merely disgruntled citizens in revolt. Consequently, Lordaeron offered nothing more than courteous wishes for Lane's predicament. In the aftermath of the Dark Portal's opening and the conclusion of the First War, the realm of Stormwind succumbed to the onslaught of the Orcish Horde, with the Dwarven territory of Cosmodan soon following suit. Fleeing the devastation, refugees from Stormwind under the guidance of Lord Anduin Lothar sought sanctuary across the sea on the southern shores of the continent of Lordaeron. Here, Lothar and the youthful Turalyon rallied the leaders of the human nations, the displaced dwarves of Ironforge, the gnomes of Nomergon, and the noble high elves of Quel'Thalas, to unite in the alliance of Lordaeron. Under the stewardship of King Tyrannus and Lord Lothar, the alliance triumphed in the Second War driving the Horde back to the Dark Portal and obliterating the gateway to the Orc's homeland. However, Lothar's fall during the assault on Blackrock Spire led to political fractures within the Alliance. The primary point of contention was a tax imposed by King Tyrannus to fund the Orc internment camps. Despite Lord Aron's efforts to maintain its central role, several nations withdrew their support from the Alliance. Only Stormwind remained steadfast in its commitment to the Alliance though the geographical distance between Stormwind and Lordaeron rendered their alliance somewhat symbolic. After the war, many Stormwind refugees chose to remain in Lordaeron. Following the Second War, Lordaeron established a military outpost along the fringes of the Alterac Mountains. This outpost was later targeted by the Horde of Draenor in a bid to reclaim the Book of Medivh from the Alteraki. The kingdom subsequently annexed at least part of the Alterac Mountains. As the Third War loomed, Arthas Menethil journeyed through the King's Road towards Stronbrad, with the local populace recognizing him as their lord and rallying to Lordaeron's cause. In the wake of prolonged discussions regarding the confinement of the orcs, a sinister group known as the Cult of the Damned, led by the ominous Kel'Thuzad, surfaced. Concurrently, a plague began to ravage the northern regions of Lordaeron. As the plague spread, it left a trail of destruction, with towns and cities succumbing to the scourge including the significant locations of Anderhal and Stratholme. Following the cleansing of Stratholme, a group of former paladins, known as Death Lords, replicated this horrific act across numerous cities in Lordaeron. Amidst the turmoil and suffering, even some members of the clergy lost their connection to the Holy Light. The final blow came with the corruption of Prince Arthas Menethil, the heir to the throne of Lordaeron. The capital city fell under his reign of terror, with his captains, Felric and Marwyn, orchestrating the massacre of this atrocity. In a cruel twist of fate, Lordaeron was left in ruins, with refugees fleeing to Cosmodan and the southern eastern kingdoms. Many others sought refuge in Kalimdor with Jaina Proudmoore. While remnants of the Lordaeron armies remained behind, the Scourge, led by the now King Arthas, swept across Lordaeron, overpowering the combined forces of neighboring human and dwarven nations, and even the elven kingdoms of Quel'Thalas. A civil war ensued between Arthas' forces, the remaining Dreadlords, and the Free Undead, later known as the Forsaken, led by Sylvanas Windrunner. As Arthas was summoned to Northrend to defeat the Lich King, Windrunner's forces, with the help of the traitorous Dreadlord Varimothras, and the remaining Alliance Resistance forces under Grand Marshal Othmar Garethos, claimed victory. However, Sylvanas betrayed her Alliance allies ordering the slaughter of the remaining resistance forces and claiming the ruined former capital of Lordaeron, now known as the Ruins of Lordaeron, as their own. Some refugees from Lordaeron managed to reach Stormwind City. It is believed by Matthias Shaw and Flynn Fairwind that these refugees, in an attempt to honor their fallen king, buried the crown of Tyrus Menethil II in an unmarked grave at the lighthouse in Stormwind Harbor. 
In the aftermath of Lordaeron's downfall, the once unified kingdom fragmented into four main factions. The loyal remnants of Lordaeron, the zealous Scarlet Crusade, the undead Forsaken, and the righteous Argent Dawn. The loyalists, primarily located in southern Lordaeron, held steadfast to their alliance allegiance. Their key settlements were South Shore, a vital port, and the prosperous Hillsbrad Fields. Despite the looming threats, they found allies in the Stormpike Guard, the magically fortified Dalaran, and the Gilnean towns of Pyrewood Village and Amber Mill. However, the curse of the worgen that plagued Pyrewood Village cast a shadow over their alliance. The Wildhammer Dwarves of the Hinterlands and the High Elves of Queldenil Lodge also lent their support. While the alliance maintained a foothold in the Plaguelands through Chilwyn Camp, the Scarlet Crusade, driven by an intense fear of the undead, held territory scattered across northern Lordaeron. Their paranoia led them to attack almost anyone on sight, making them a formidable force. Their strongholds included the Scarlet Monastery in Tyr's Fall Glades, Hearthglen in the Western Plaguelands, and Tyr's Hand in the Eastern Plaguelands. The Argent Dawn, a splinter group from the Scarlet Crusade, held a more balanced approach to the war against the Scourge. Their main base was at Light's Hope Chapel, and they welcomed anyone willing to aid their cause, including members of the Horde and the Forsaken. The Forsaken claimed the heart of the Old Kingdom. They established their base in the ruins of Lordaeron and the Undercity beneath it, controlling much of the Tyrus Fall Glades in towns like Brill and Deathknell. Other factions also staked their claims on Lordaeron's territories. The Syndicate, seeking revenge for Lordaeron's role in Alterac's downfall, seized Durnhold Keep while the Ravenhold assassins tried to curb their power. The Undead Scourge, however, remained the dominant force, controlling key areas like Stratholme, Anderhall, and Skolomance. The Cataclysm brought about a seismic shift in the landscape of Lordaeron. The Forsaken tightened their hold on Silverpine Forest and Hillsbrad Foothills, seizing control of Pyrewood, Ambermill, Hillsbrad Fields, and South Shore. They also launched an assault on the Alliance at the hills overlooking Hillsbrad and Anderhall in the Western Plaguelands, the Forsaken's power was evident in Tyr's Fall Glades, with Brill being reconstructed in their unique architectural style. Their victories against the Alliance were significant, with the exception of the Wildhammer Clan and Queldenil Lodge. The shift in power effectively dismantled the Alliance's control over Lordaeron. The destruction of South Shore and Hillsbrad Fields forced many survivors to retreat to Fenris Isle, where they made a final stand. However, they were eventually defeated and the Alliance's presence in Lordaeron was reduced to Chilwyn Camp, Airy Peak, Queldenil Lodge, and the Stormpikes. Meanwhile, the Argent Dawn transformed into the Argent Crusade during the war with the Lich King. They controlled large areas of land in the Western Plaguelands, including Hearthglen and several farmsteads. They also took control of the towers scattered across the Eastern Plaguelands, reinforcing Light's Hope and eventually conquering the city of Tearshand. Despite their neutrality, the Argents became the closest representation of the living in Lordaeron following the Forsaken's victories. The Scarlet Crusade's influence was significantly reduced, with most of their strongholds being taken over by either the Forsaken or the Argent Crusade. The Syndicate was expelled from Durnhold Keep but remained active in Stronbrad. The Scourge, a faction of the undead, suffered greatly following the Cataclysm. They lost most of their territories outside the Eastern Plaguelands, where they maintained a strong presence. However, their threat was effectively reduced to a mere nuisance in Tyr's Fall Glades. The Scourge was completely removed from Silverpine Forest after losing control of Fenris Keep. Now we move on to Battle for Azeroth, which is the most recent big involvement with Lordaeron, barring any future involvement that we have. The Alliance, spearheaded by Anduin Wren and Gen Greymane, launched a daring campaign to reclaim the capital of Lordaeron in the battle for Lordaeron. A direct response to the burning of Teldrassil. Despite their efforts, the capital was left in ruins, tainted and unoccupied. The Alliance and Horde continued to clash across the lands once under forsaken rule, each striving to secure control over the remaining territories of Lordaeron. The Fourth War concluded with a fragile truce between the two factions. Yet the Alliance succeeded in retaking South Shore. The neighboring Gilnaeans also regained control over their former strongholds of Shadowfang Keep and Fenris Keep under the leadership of the Bloodfang Pack. However, Tears Fall Glades remained under the control of the Forsaken. And that's going to do it for this one, but hopefully you did enjoy. And it does seem like they're going to do more with Lordaeron, whether it's rebuilding the city or something to that extent, but 
with the blight being cleared after doing the undead quest and then we have the heritage armor quest for the undead coming out here soon it would appear that we're going to have more going on for Lordron, which is very exciting it'd be really cool to have it re be rebuilt since we've never actually seen it in game rebuilt and get to explore it which i'm really looking forward to if that does happen but either way i'll see you in the next one take care of yourself you're doing great